stay tuned for our pre-recorded interview with Rose O'Neill Greenhow. Welcome to the Simple Word Flash. We are here today to meet with Mrs. Rose O'Neill Greenhow. Mrs. Greenhow was is one of the most renowned Confederate spies during the Civil War. Without further ado, let's turn to Mrs. Greenhow. Thank you so much for having me on your show, Anne. You look like quite an interesting person, Rose. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I was born in 1813 to John and Eliza Greenhow. I was fo just four in 1817 when my father was murdered by his own slaves. My mom was a great parent, but this tragedy left her devastated. She had four daughters, including me, and our farm was short on money due to the passing of my father. I was then sent to Washington, D.C., where I would find housing with my aunt, Maria Ann Hill. I owe so much to her because she looked, took me in and raised me as her own. Washington, D.C. is such a politically important city, and this move awarded me with the opportunity to gain many, many friendships with uh, high-ranking people like James Buchanan and John C. Calhoun. I used these strong relationships as the main source of my information when giving the Confederates intelligence about the Union troops' next move. As I said, instead of friends, I see Washington as moral enemies. Instead of loving the old flag of the stars and stripes, I see it in only the symbol of murder, plunder, oppression, and shame. Born in Maryland and then moved to Washington, D.C., could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, I was born in Maryland, Montgomery County to be exact. Unfortunately, when I was four, my father was killed by the slaves, as I said before. My mother was left in pieces over my father's death, and to make matters worse, she was left to run a poverty-stricken farm. So, to help her out, my aunt in Washington, D.C. took me in as a teenager. I grew up in D.C. and became acquainted with life in the political world. It was actually in my early years that I was able to gain important skills that I would use during my years of spying. I'm sorry, sorry to hear for your loss. It is very hard to lose someone close to you. I am pleased to hear that you were able to make a life for yourself. How many years of education did you have? By the time I was, the Civil War had begun, I was fully educated which is more than the majority of people in the South had. Moving into such a bureaucratic scene, shape and establish your opinions at all in your early life? Yes, growing up in this politically important city was very beneficial to my years, gathering information on the Union's next move. During my early years, I was able to grow very close to some high politicians, presidents, and even military officers. Many of them even welcomed me into their own homes. Washington, D.C. is the capital, so having connections with such a substantial union base was very salubrious to my career as a successful Confederate spy. I had easy access to information and due to the fact that I was looked upon as an innocent woman, at the time no one would suspect a lady such as myself, especially one who grew up in that neighborhood. So no one really suspected me for a really long time. What was the first information you gathered to help Confederate cause? And what effects did this have for both the Union and the Confederacy? My very first missions for the Confederate Army was when I came across the Union plans for the Battle of Bull Run wrapped around a cigarette in an abandoned camp. While they were fighting, I sent a 10-word message to General Beauregard, which helped the Confederates win the battle. This 10-word mes message was the reason why General Beauregard awarded me with the credit of winning this battle. I was very honored to be given this credit, and I was very pleased also to be given such a great accomplishment. I understand that your own father was killed by his slaves. Does this cause you to harbor any ill-tempered feelings towards slaves? When I was young, I was extremely resentful towards slaves because it was just a few like slack slaves that altered my life completely. I was forced to grow up without a father and I basically lived through all my teenage years without the guidance of a mother because I lived so far away with my aunt. I wasn't given the choice to grow up with a father figure and I don't know what it's like to have a person to love and protect you to, through everything that life has to throw at you. I believe that I will always feel a little bitter towards slaves, but I now have realized that I shouldn't pin the actions of one group of slaves on every single one. So you would say that you're pro-slavery? Yes, I am pro-slavery. After all, I'm spying and gathering union intel for the Confederate cause. As I said, I don't blame slaves for my father's death, but I am still in favor of slavery staying within the states to help production. Is the Civil War important to you, being a member of the states? Yeah, the outcome of this war is, will greatly impact the United States and the economy of the southern states. I may not live to see the end of the war within one nation, but I 
know that this will change history forever. This country, country is currently battle-torn, and a country cannot come out of war as blood-stained as this one is without everyday life being altered. I expect this war will change uh, the people we know and the ones that we once knew. Tell me about some of your experiences during the Civil War. Did you ever get caught on your actions? This one's really bad. Actually, I encountered a rough time during one of my findings. I'm sorry. No. I was discovered by a group of Union soldiers who grew very suspicious on me. And on August 23rd, 1861, Detective Allen Pinkerton ugh, put me on house arrest for a sign. So to answer your questions, yes, I got caught. Under Detective Pinkerton's command, the Union soldiers searched my house. I carefully had hid the codes and didn't think that they would be found, but to no avail, they were discovered. They uh, threw me into the old Capitol prison in Washington with my daughter by my side. While in prison, much to the Pinkerton's chagrin, I still continued to send and receive these secret messages. They could be hid in the bun of a woman's hair or tucked under her dress so that nobody would expect, suspect a thing because a woman helping me was... <laughs> thought to be very unlikely. While the circumstances could have been better, this is the only way to get through and continue with my messages. Smell her, girl. Smell her. Sniff it out. We're here on the orders of General Pinkerton. Let us in your house. <laughs> Grab oh her. My God. Bring the codes. Did you miss your life from before the Civil War? I do miss spending time with my four daughters, and I'm upset that I missed most of their childhood. I did get to spend a lot of my time with my youngest daughter, Rose, who wasted her time away with me in prison. She was my only companion throughout those long days. I'm afraid we've run out of time, but thank you for the interview, and I wish you well. Everybody give it up for Rose and Neil Greenhouse. We're following a breaking news story. We just received information that unfortunately Rosa Neal Greenhow has passed away. She drowned on her return from England. A Union ship gave chase and the captain sent Rose and two companions to shore in a lifeboat. Because they ran aground on a sandbar, sadly the boat was overturned by violent waves which sent Rose into the water. It was said that the immense amount of gold on board brought her down. Let's have a moment of silence for Rose the Confederate spy. Yes, I was born in Maryland, Montgomery County to be exact. Unfortunately, when I was four, as I said before, my father was killed. My mother was left in pieces over my father's death, and she was left in pieces. Like, crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about your loss. It is very hard to lose someone close to you. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry. had begun, I was fully educated, which is more than the majority of people in the South had. And shape your political opinions at all in your early life? Yeah, growing up in this political important city was beneficial. Kaylee. Her hand. They were fighting, I sent a ten word message to General P.G.T. Beauregard, which helped the Confederates win the battle. This ten word message was the reason why General Beauregard awarded me with the credit of winning. <laughs> I didn't mean to stare! <laughs> Missions for the Confederate Army was when I came across the Union plans for the Battle of Bull Run. 
While they were fighting, I sent a 10 letter word message. 10 letter word? What? 10 letter word. <laughs> and I was very pleased to have gotten such a great response. Huh? I understand that you're a father. <laughs> Stop. I'm gonna get you! <laughs> so so stupid. <laughs> Hello, I'm. <laughs> Look at this. Hello. We're, we're on. <laughs> no, you already knocked. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! That. that was not the knock of a person who's barging in. <laughs>